Hello guys, today we're going to take another look at my version 2 controller. This time we're going to take a little look at the progress that I've made on controlling a standard CQ Control 32 model. So the model I've been trying to control is the only CQ Control 32 model I have, which is a infrared Fent 930 model. And it's because of the infrared on this model that I decided to include infrared LEDs on my controller. So what I've been trying to do is figure out what kind of commands CQ are sending to this tractor so that I can replicate them on my controller. So although that might sound like something quite simple, it's not actually that easy to do. So what I've done is use the CQ controller to get some idea of the different pulses that the uh, controller is sending to the tractor. And from what I can see, it's sending 56 uh, data pulses, so 56 bits. Um, the first bit is 20 smaller pulses long, and the smaller pulses are around about 1.2 microseconds, with a space of around 1 microsecond between them. So that first bit is 20 pulses long, but the rest of the bits are either 15 pulses long or 25 pulses long. So I'm taking that to mean that a 15 pulse bit is a 0 and a 25 pulse bit is a 1. Now each bit then is spaced 88 microseconds apart. Or these are the values that I seem to be getting. So, and this is for channel 1 of the, the infrared uh, tractor. So this is all to do with channel 1. But the same principle should apply to the other channels. So that's the structure of our 56 bits. Now after a packet of 56 bits is sent, there is a space of about 64 milliseconds. And then the next packet of 56 bits is sent. So that's what I've been trying to replicate with my controller here. I've made a little bit of progress on this. What I've done is take this controller, uh, record a kind of a normal state, then turn on this switch here with the lights, record that state, switch the lights off, switch this button on, record that state, switch that button off, switch this button on, and so on. And I've done that for all of these six switches, and also for the steering. So I was hoping to be able to figure out which bits done what functions. Now it's probably not that simple as well, because uh, I think a lot of infrared uh, toys have a checksum in them as well. So I'll have to figure out if this 56 bits has that in it, and how it's been worked out. That could be pretty challenging that. So what I've done so far is record the state of the tractor for the lights being on. But because I didn't have the tractor on at the time, I didn't realise that the wheels are actually spinning slightly and the steering is moving. But that's beside the point. The point is that uh, we should see the tractor come to life when we have our controller on. So when we look at the controller here. We go down to infrared control 32 and then Fent 930. I have it called Fent 930, but really what it is is channel 1. So I'll need to change that to just, just to channel 1. So select that. Now our infrared signal should be, uh, should be sending. So I'll push in the battery and you can see that our tractor, well, our wheels are spinning for a start and the lights are on. And if I hide the controller, see the, the light has gone off. And the wheels aren't spinning because we've lost our signal. I put the controller back in. So you can see I am able to send some data to the tractor to control it. Now it's not working perfectly. So as I move the controller away, the range is much lower than it was with the it's much lower than it was with the original controller I think around about a meter is as far as I'm able to uh, take the controller away from the tractor so far to try and increase the range I reduce the resistance on the infrared LEDs so that they should get a little bit more current and be a little bit brighter but that doesn't seem to have made a huge amount of difference I did reduce the resistance a lot but the uh, range then hasn't really increased too much so what I think is happening is I haven't perfectly got the pulses 
the correct spacing apart so as we're moving the signal further away it's um, becoming a little distorted and the tractor is not uh, getting the correct signal by the time it reaches the tractor so I think that my pulsing isn't just perfect enough to uh, maintain the signal over a long distance so I'll work a little bit on the pulsing and see if I can improve that range but it looks like we're off to a good start we are definitely getting a signal that this is able to interpret and it should just be a matter of uh, doing a little bit more testing and trying to figure it out as well as fixing the range I still need to try and decode the signal figure out exactly what's happening so I know when I push the button for the lights I think the ninth bit goes from uh, 0 to 1 and then I think it was this switch changed the 8 bit from 0 to 1 this switch the 7th bit this switch the 6th bit and uh, something like that but the bits at the end of the 56 bits also changed which is why I'm thinking there's some sort of checksum thing there but uh, we'll have to try and figure that out but that we could get any control from this at all is pretty promising and hopefully with a little bit more work we should be able to get full control so that's all I wanted to show you with this video um, make sure and hit the like button if you thought it was interesting or you like the idea of controlling the uh, secret control tractors with my controller and if you want to help me decode the 56 bits I've put uh, the measurements that i done in the forum so you can follow the link in the description which will bring you there and uh, maybe you'll see some correlation between the uh, 56 bits that I haven't got to yet, I haven't figured out yet. Any help with that is very much appreciated because I'd say it'll be a pretty tricky thing to uh, to figure out. So that's all I wanted to show you, so thanks very much for watching.